And how do you know that's that's what it's about? When you come to get deliverance from something, and you know, it, sometimes it takes a brother and sister in Christ to help you out, man. We we're not called to carry everything. <laughs> Who wants to carry everything? Not me. <laughs> We don't want to be worn out. We want to bear each other's burdens, right? That's part of the, and even now, I'm, I'm so thankful I'll share this, and then I'll make sure we get through the message. But, I mean, even with the body of Christ helping me move, we, we moved this week, and so many people showed up, and it was just, it, it was everything. I mean, it was awesome. Sherry and Russ and Tanaya and Danny, just everybody, Rhiannon. I mean, just people, it meant the world because it t makes the burden lighter you know, and it, it's bearing one another's burden. It's like, that's the way it's supposed to be, you know, to help each other out in their time of need. So I just want to thank everybody that helped. It means a lot to me to have a kingdom family. You know, we don't have a whole lot of biological family here, so kingdom is family, right? <laughs> uh, man, this, this message has been forged in me for months and uh, I'm so excited. I'll go into a little bit of a teaching mode tonight, but that's what the Lord asked me to do. But he challenged me. I went on a run. It was a slow jog slash walk, but it was a start for me. <laughs> and I've been believing for that for a long time. So the Lord asked me, will you move your mountain? Will you move your mountain? So that's why I got this picture. I had to buy it. And, it's, and we're going to go over the scripture verse. When it, what are you, old mountain? You shall be thrown into the sea. So I want you to visualize your mountains right now, whatever they are, whatever the mountain is for people that are visual. And then we're going to open up to Mark 11. And I'm just going to lead, read a little bit of scripture here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I see people visualizing their mountains. Just write them down if you have to. Whatever mountain standing in your way, whatever you're believing for. If you don't have a mountain, praise God, then it's time for promotion. You got something you got to move to bring the kingdom. What's your kingdom assignment? What do you got to move? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right, so we're going to go to Mark 11 as a refresher. I know many of you all have read this story. It's where the fig tree withered away, starting in verse 12. Now the next day they had come out from... From Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing afar a fig tree having leaves, he sent to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again, and his disciples heard it. How many know that was a declaration? <laughs> Let no one eat fruit from you again. Now we're going to skip down to verse 20. It talks about Jesus cleansing the temple and, and uh, the fear of the Lord was there. And he said, now in the morning as they passed, they saw the fig tree dried up from its roots. And Peter, remembering him, said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you have cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not have doubt in his heart, but believes those things which what he said will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you have asked when you pray, believe them that you receive them and you will have them. How many know that's not a question? That's a statement. <laughs> How many know that when he cursed that fig tree, he knew it was going to die? There was one single mind, one single mind. He didn't have to think twice. There was no second guessing. When he opened his mouth, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. And so how many times do we get into different situations and, and the enemy tries to send doubt, people in our lives, naysayers, Whatever the circumstance is, how many know that the enemy still came to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came to give us life and life more abundantly? And right here, it says we cannot be defeated. That's what it's saying. If your mountain's in the way, it says if you believe, you shall have whatever. You, there is no defeat in the kingdom. Just let that set in. 
The only defeat is if you quit. If you quit, that brings defeat. We weren't designed. We're designed to be more than conquerors. So God was telling me, he said, is there anything stopping you from moving your mountain? No. So what are hindrances to moving your mountain? He gave me, I think it was six or seven. He, t- he said, have the people think about this as I describe these hindrances and ask the Lord, are any of these standing in my way? Do I have any of these hindrances? Because we want them out so that you can move your mountain. He said, when you look at your mountain, do you, do you have a victim mentality? Do you lay down, self-loathe, what will be will be, nonchalant, no fight, like rolling, it's basically like rolling over and playing dead to your mountain. (laughs) You know, we're not victims. Do you have the fight to fight, to wrestle with God, to have stamina? Victim actually means a person being tricked or duped. So think about that. So you are undefeated. Whatever mountain is will be thrown into the sea. So you're not going to agree with a victim mentality. We are not victims. We're not tricked. We're not duped. We have Christ Jesus inside of us to move, to step, and live, and have our being. It actually, I was looking up some more victim meanings in the meeting. It says to be hoax, a person harmed. Now, how many can say that they could have had victim, they recognized victim mentalities in their bloodline, unfortunately. So we want to break that tonight. We want to repent and renounce. This is going to be interactive this whole time because we want you to receive. But if you've agreed with a victim mentality or if it's on your bloodline, I'm just going to have you do to repeat after me, and I'm going to have you place your hand on your mind and just say, Lord, I repent and renounce. On behalf of myself and all my ancestors for any agreement that we ever made with the victim spirit, I renounce that. I command it to leave, and I ask you, Lord, to burn out by the power of your Holy Spirit every stronghold that has to do with victimizing. I speak the truth over myself and my descendants. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So Lord, I ask you to break every generational curse of victim mentality off the RNA and DNA. Oof. More Holy Spirit. Just refill them. I see people getting deliverance. Someone wait a minute. I just release your glory right now, God. Refill them. Refill them. I see some people getting downloads on where they've been agreeing with it. (sighs) Just push that thought out. It's time to conquer. It's time to overcome. There's nothing stopping you. There's nothing that can stay that's contrary to the word of God. Thank you, God. Just refill them, refill them with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Now, one of the biggest things you can do, and we'll do this at different parts when we do activation. Now, I want you to prophesy to yourself. You can do it out loud. You can do it in your head. I want you to declare and decree over yourself, I'm more than a conqueror. Say it again. Say it again. I'm undefeated. I'm unstoppable for the kingdom of God. No weapon fashioned against me will ever prosper. I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So when you get pushed back, sometimes you got to be your biggest prophet. You got to prophesy. When it looks the toughest, sounds the roughest, you got to prophesy. What if you're the only one? That's right. <laughs> we got the baby out of the mouth of babes, right? <laughs> I love that. Uh, how many know the Lord knows our weaknesses? So he gave me these points for a reason. So you're going to be able to stay free after that. 
Every time. Nope, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. That's what I want to stick in your spirit, man. Lord, I just speak faith into their spirit, man, right now. It's an extra measure of faith, God. Thank you, God. Faith is coming up. Number two, <clears throat> the Lord says, does the orphan mentality stand in your way of your mountain? How many know people <clears throat> that literally, I know there's orphans in the natural, but basically an orphan means a parent who is dead, but they act like they have no God, even though they're saved. They act like they're alone, nobody's with them, they just, everything's just, they're all by themselves. I mean, that's usually the number one way you can recognize an orphan. There's no hope. There's no nothing. It's just, I'm by myself. I'm on my own. I don't have a father God that loves me, that hears me. I pray, but I don't believe he really hears me. You know, how, how many have recognized people in the family that have done that? But it's not true. We're not orphans. And I've seen orphan mentalities come down the bloodline and come down the bloodline. How can you walk in destiny if you don't even believe you have a father? Because it's a constant hindrance. How can you step in the goodness of God? I'm going to get somebody to read uh, John 14, verses 15 through 18. Whoever gets there first. No, I'm just eating. <laughs> John 14, verses 15 through 18. You got it? Okay, go for it. Really loud. <laughs> Amen. That's right. So what does the word say? We're not orphans. We have a father. We have a brother Jesus. We have Holy Spirit. It says the spirit of truth comes to you. Do you believe the word? That's always like to challenge people. A lot of times orphan mentalities can come in and traumas, multiple ways of trauma. But I still, I, I did this uh, de corporate deliverance on orphan mentality at at a deliverance conference, and she actually saw it burning off the DNA and RNA of her bloodline. So you want to go ahead and repent. I know it's very similar to victim, but it, an orphan, I almost, <laughs> I feel like it's worth. There's no comforting. You can't comfort an orphan. You can try to say everything, and they usually go hand in hand. Victim and orphan will usually run together. Because that actually, they have to realize, I cannot sit and wallow in my stuff anymore. <laughs> so it requires accountability and responsibility. And I don't know who this is for. I feel like it's for multiple people. You have to know when to pour into orphan people and when not to. Because you'll waste your oil. You love on them, but that doesn't mean you pour and pour and pour when they there's no... They're, they're not making any changes. That just means they're not teachable. They don't want help right now. But you can pray for them. <laughs> you can intercede and declare over them. But now might not be the time to minister to them. And you ask God to set them free of the orphan mentality. So let's go ahead and do a repentance generationally for the orphan mentality. Just say, Lord, I repent on behalf of myself and my ancestors for all agreements with the orphan spirit. I renounce that. And I ask you to heal my mind of every or orphan thought and break every generational curse of the or orphan spirit off my RNA and DNA. And I thank you, God, that I walk in the spirit of adoption because you are my father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. So I see people getting some freedom there. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You're never alone. He's never forsaked you. Thank you, God. I hear somebody in their mind. They're going, but I don't hear him. Well, that's a lie. 
<laughs> you hear more than you realize. So we just break that lie, renounce that lie right off of you. My sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. He may speak to your senses. He may speak to you in dreams. It may be different than other people, but you will hear his voice. Thank you, God. You just free them up. There it is. They're getting freedom in that area right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hmm. The next one he said, what about the spirit of doubt? I said, what do you want me to look up? He said, look up what the spirit of doubt is. And it's actually synonyms are fearful, afraid, uncertain, and distrust. The spirit of doubt. So when your mountain's standing there, basically what the enemy's trying to do is have you just distrust and be fearful from your heavenly father. So he's trying to back you in a corner. It's a lie. Every part of it's a lie. You have victory no matter what. The mountain has to be thrown into the sea. So doubt has no place in you. It tries the other synonyms were um, uncertainty. And actually it's deadly It's because it's a lie. It keeps you bound to fear and torment. I mean, who wants to be bound by fear and torment? Christ did not die for us to be bound deadly in fear and torment. You can't take your mountain if you're always in distrust. We read the passage where he says, He that believes those things, it shall be done. So the currency of heaven is faith. So every time the enemy tries to tempt you into doubt, he's trying to rob your faith because he knows the moment you step into faith, you get your promise. So that's why he wrestles and tries to get you to doubt. And that's where you renew your mind. That's where you bind that spirit away. That's where you cast it out if you ever went through something or a trial. And there's no condemnation. It's freedom time where you stand and you stand firm. So let's repent and renounce and break any generational curses of doubt. Because we, how many know we want our gene lines to be full of faith? We don't want the doubting Thomas. <laughs> God still loved him. There's a season where we walk through doubt sometimes. It's just getting freedom. It's stepping into who we really are. So we just say, Lord, Lord we, repent we repent on behalf of ourselves and our ancestors for anywhere we agreed with the spirit of doubt. I renounce that by the blood of Jesus, and I command every spirit of doubt out of me. And all fear and all torment out with it in the name of Jesus. Oof. I'm just going to stop right here. I see deliverance happen. Thank you, God. Just refill them. Refill them with the power of your spirit. And just say, Lord, break every generational curse of doubt off of me and all my descendants by the blood of the Lamb. How many know doubt is a lie? Let me give you another reason. Because Mark 9, 23 says nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible to him who believe. No matter how long you've stood for one miracle, how long you've stood, it doesn't matter. Financially, marriage, whatever it is, whatever the situation is, nothing is impossible. So we have to move and live and have our being in him. Some of that's getting in the secret place to get the strength to fight the doubt, to get the strength to stand when everything is coming at you, to get the strength when nobody knows what's going on, but it's the wrestle between you and God. How many know the strength comes from our being one with him? It's Christ in us. So and these things are not overcome in a day. It's actually getting to the place where you trust the Lord, and that's where the doubt throws the mountain into the sea. The, the spirit of faith just rises in you as the trust comes in. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Preach it. Uh. <laughs> That's right. You're a miracle baby, right? <laughs> uh. The next one he says, uh, the next hindrance to throwing your mountain to the sea is unbelief which is a little bit different than doubt because it's not just a fear and a lie and a being afraid and distrust. It actually just means you lack faith. You haven't done the things to build your faith 
the things of spending time with God or reading the word or the small steps to build your faith. How many know everybody's different? So ways that build my faith may be different than your ways of building faith. But the word says that when you come to the Father, he will withhold no good thing. That means no good thing. Whatever your mountain is, doesn't matter what the mountain is, right? So let's repent and renounce for any unbelief. Hmm. I just see somebody having a conversation, but it's so hard, Lord. I hear him speaking to the Lord. And some of that, the Lord has shown me that unbelief comes from not casting your cares upon the Lord. That's what he's showing me right now. Thank you, God. So just say, Lord, I repent on behalf of myself and my ancestors or any time in my life I made an agreement with unbelief. I renounce that. I command that out. I thank you, Jesus, that I'm full of faith. And you're breaking that curse of unbelief off my RNA and off my DNA. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God, that I know that you are good. And I believe you will move my mountain. Thank you, God. I still see freedom taking place. Thank you, God. I'm just going to release the glory for a second because I just see spirits leaving the building. So, Lord, I just release your presence, God. I thank you that you're setting people free right now. We just honor your presence, God. Bind up the wounds. I see him binding up wounds from some of these things we've talked about, some hard seasons that people have been through. You just bind up the brokenhearted right now. You take the cares, the cares of this world that try to choke out the word, God, and you just strengthen them in their inner man. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, God. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Just wash over wave after wave. I actually see the healing anointing taking place right now. So if you just need a healing, I'm going to call out some words of knowledge at the end. But just receive right now on the glory. We just command healing, God. Joints and knees and backs and vertebrae right now. We just thank you, God. Shoulders, necks, right now. The thyroids, we thank you, God, for healing. Healing in your presence. Migraines. I see migraines breaking right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I see him touching a few more people, so I don't want to rush. Just thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for bringing healing and miracles to their body right now. Thank you for lifting the burdens. Lifting the burdens one by one. If you've been carrying a heavy load, just cast it down. Lay it at his feet right now. Tell him what it is. If it's your children, release it to the Lord. If it's your finances, release it to the Lord. If it's your marriage, release it to the Lord. Cast your cares upon you. Him because he perfects those things that concern you. That's what the word says. He perfects those things which concern you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I see burdens being unpacked. I see book bags being unpacked. Thank you, God. Hmm. He who sits in the heavens laughs. Sometimes you just got to laugh to shake the burdens off. It's the oil of joy and gladness. <laughs> Thank you, God. Sometimes it's just getting in his presence. And the burdens don't matter anymore. <laughs> 
it gets you oily and it doesn't matter anymore. Because <laughs> there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and freedom. So when you feel that burden trying to come back, you say, no, not today. Not today. I'm going to walk through. I'm going to throw my mountain in the sea. I'm not going to pick up. I'm not going to figure out how God's going to move my mountain. I'm going to take my hands off. And I'm going to praise the Lord and I'm going to stay in joy and not figure out 15 different ways of how I think it's going to happen. <laughs> because he's a mountain mover. We know the mountain mover doesn't get any better than that, right? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Let's see a few more people laying stuff down. I want to honor them, what Jesus is doing. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't get in a word of knowledge. Somebody's really concerned about their grandmother. I won't go into all the details, but just release that to the Lord. C can't carry that. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. All right, I think I'm clear to go to the next point. He said, the next thing he said to me is humanism. How many know what humanism is? I got the definition, just so you know. God told me one time he hates humanism. He gave me a word. It's on our website. You can go read it. He said, it's, it's defined as an outlook or system attaching prime importance to human rather than divine or supernatural powers. It always seeks rational matters to solve human problems. How many know that your mountain ain't going to move no matter how many times you try to figure it out? You cannot move into humanism. How many had those parents that always said, well, you got to do this and you got to do that and you're not doing this and you're not doing that, but they're not in the prayer closet hearing from the Lord. You, I mean, the Lord may tell you to stand on your head and you get healed. How many know that's not human reasoning? <laughs> That's not human logic. So we need to break that off the bloodline because your breakthrough is not going to come with your brain. It's going to come through Jesus Christ. <laughs> How many know he's faithful? He's the breaker, the bell parazim that goes before us to move our mountains. So let's break that off the bloodline. And if you've, if you've been there, if that's the way you think, just renounce it and say, God, I want to make decisions from spirit to spirit. Because that's your wisdom, not my wisdom. I'm not going to rely on my own understanding of how things are supposed to happen. I'm going to receive your wisdom. So we're going to do a divine exchange right here. Thank you, God. Just say, Lord, I repent and renounce for anywhere I have agreed with humanism or my ancestors. And I ask you, Lord... To break every generational curse of humanism off the RNA, the DNA, and my mind, and off my descendants. I thank you, God, that I have the mind of Christ, and I rely on the seven spirits of God in every situation that I encounter, especially my mountain, in the name of Jesus. Oof, so I see freedom taking place right now. I just command that out right now. All of it break off their minds. Every spirit of mind binding and mind control, I just command it to break right now out in the name of Jesus. I declare clarity. Every spirit of confusion, I command it to leave right now. Thank you, God. I just give them clarity of mind, clarity of mind. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, how many can say, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, that they recognize any of these hindrances that they've been dealing with? A lot of people. See, you're not alone. Just look to your neighbor and say, we're in good company. We're overcoming. <laughs> we're transforming like Christ. You know? He might be like Paul. You might be hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. 
He was in good company. He was perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Because who? But God. Christ in Paul was able to live and move and have his being in whatever situation he was in to let Christ arise in him and do what he was called to do. He was shipwrecked. He went through all kinds of things, beaten and bloody. and He had stamina. He had moxie, <laughs> you know. He didn't quit. That's right. Faith looks like something. It looks. When you're, when you're in faith, people just know. It looks like something. It's the opposite of the natural realm, you know. I, unfortunately, I worked at the hospital for 18 years, and I see people quit praying for the sick because somebody they prayed for died. Well, guess what? You keep going. The second brand he prayed for was resurrected. So it's not our decision, but it's our job to bring the kingdom to every situation, right? So faith looks like something. We have to keep going. We can't just quit because the first person we prayed for or gave a prophetic word to didn't receive it or didn't get healed immediately or didn't get delivered the first time. We have to keep going and building the kingdom. Well, there's no way. God just makes ways. And you might be the, the person that comes alongside because I see this is going to hit a few people. You might be that intercessor that people need to help move their mountain. Now, they're doing everything they can do, but you're interceding to give them strength. Your prayers are lifting them up so they can move their mountains. How many know intercessors matter to the kingdom? Jesus was an intercessor. <laughs> if Jesus did it, how many know we need to do it, right? Because we've got to be about our Father's business. Sometimes faith looks like getting out of bed and trusting God from the rest. And it was so funny because when I was on my run, it was funny. The Lord told me, he said, take a picture of that. I'm like, what? He said, go back. And I went back and actually got it on my phone. And I know y'all can't see it that far away. So I'll just tell you what it says. I was, I was writing this sermon and I was running. And it said on the ground, keep. And then you run a little bit. And it said moving. Then you run a little bit. And it said forward. And it was written in chalk. <laughs> so sometimes when you stand in faith, what do you do? When you've done all you know to do, you stand and you keep moving forward. Because what? If you don't quit, you're unstoppable. Sometimes it might take a Joshua or a Caleb or somebody to come alongside of you and hold your hands up when you've when you're been standing for that mountain for a long time. But you know what? It has to go into the sea. It has to bow. The word says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. How many want to please God? You know? The doubt is nothing but a lie. Because we have a faithful God. So you may say, okay, I broke these hindrances. Now how do I increase my faith? I need help. What are some things I can do? Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. What do you do? This is what I do. This might not work for you, but this is I'm just sharing a tool. I declare over myself, my family, my parents, my children, an hour a day. I pick the scriptures, and I get the books, and I just decree and declare, decree and declare, decree and declare, decree, because that's what God has me do in this season. It might not always be that. It might be prophetic utterances. It might be praying in tongues. But that's, you're hearing the word. You're hearing the word. And as you speak that word, you're picturing your kids changing. You're picturing the situations changing. You're speaking faith into your parents and to whoever you're praying for. Because uh, Job 22, 28, and 29 says, Declare the word over your situation. Decree a thing, and it will be established. Now, I'm not talking about go decree fleshly, I win the lottery, and the Lord never told you to decree that. Because <laughs> then some people come say, well, I decreed and decreed and decreed, and it didn't happen. I'm like, yeah, you were decreeing not the word of God. <laughs> you were decreeing your word. <laughs> but some people listen to the word on your phone. We have phones. That will increase your faith. Whatever area that your mountain's in. 
finances, healing, marriage, whatever it is, relationships, offense, whatever that mountain is, listen to scriptures on it. And that requires us not being lazy, right? That means we have to get out, get the scriptures, and listen to them. Sometimes that's making a list of what I need to speak to my mountain. What do I need to declare? The second thing he gave me was prophesy instead of complaining. It's so easy. How many of you know when, when you're going through some stuff, just complain, complain. It's like, oh, if one more thing happens. <laughs> How many, you know, it's our gate, is our mouth, right? I'll never forget. I've seen some crazy wild ministers, but I was ministering one time, uh, I think we were in Moravian Falls when Kevin Basconi was back in the day. He said, man, he had these light-up shoes. They were really cool. <laughs> He preached with light-up shoes. He, he was walking around. He said, yeah, I can tell when somebody complains in their life. He said, I see black bats flying around their body. I'm thinking, okay, who wants to repent? I would have said, who wants to repent for complaining right now and get those bats out of their life? We don't want to attract demons. What do they ride in on? Complaints. What are we supposed to enter his, his gates with thanksgiving and praising? That's when the breakthrough happens. So every time you want to complain, it's dying to flesh. That's really what standing in faith and moving your mountain, you die a little bit more to your natural nature because you have to go, I praise you, God, for the breakthrough. I praise you, my mountain's thrown into the sea. I praise you that I'm healed. I praise you that my grandchildren are saved. I praise you the check's coming in. I refuse to complain. The devil's a liar. He can't stop my breakthrough. Sometimes you got to praise your way into your breakthrough until the shift happens. And when you've done all to stand, you keep praising him. And you keep praising him because then you don't want those bats flying around you. Because it's not going to change anything. It's not going to attract heaven. And what do the angels respond to? Decrees, God's word, worship. Those two things right there will attract angels in your life. Will attract angels in your home. Or will attract angels to whoever you're praying for. Sometimes you just have to worship him. That was the third one. He said, worship for strength. When you've done all and you've built your faith and you're praising him and you're prophesying, sometimes you just got to worship. Worship builds the glory. Worship, I mean, everything you need is in the glory. The answer you've been waiting for is in the glory. It's his presence. It's that simple. Sometimes our human mind thinks we got to jump through hoops. Da 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 da. Because that's the way our father and our mother made us do. And he's just like, come sit with me. Come sit with me. Tapping you on your shoulder. Come sit with me. Don't figure it all out. You don't have to figure it out. Just have faith. I got you. Just, just get your mind off the mountain and spend time with me. Because then it doesn't consume your thoughts. It takes the burden off because you're fellowshipping with the Father. How many of you know your faith builds when you hear one word from the Father? Just one word. That's all you need. I got this. All things are possible. Whatever he speaks to you in your quiet time will shift your faith dramatically. It says, <laughs> also number four, declare over yourself every day, whatever it is. But I'll give you an example in areas of the faith realm that we're talking about. Just declare over and decree over yourself. I will not be double-minded. My mind is focused and single on Christ. I'm a great woman and man of faith. Why, when's the last time you spoke faith over yourself and just declared, I'm a great woman of faith. I'm a great man of faith. Sometimes you just need to speak that to be encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And decree it until it sinks in, until it hits your spirit. If you got to do it for 30 days straight, wake up every day and say, I'm a great man of faith. And then God might send you a really awesome kingdom challenge to stretch you in that. He'll put people in your pathway that need healing. He'll put people in your pathway that need finances, that need deliverance. Because you are confessing it over yourself. You're bringing it into existence. So that sets up opportunity to minister. Sometimes your faith can heal the sick. 
Because you have built your faith and they're weak at the moment and they need you to come alongside of them and speak in them in faith and boom. Like when they dropped the, the, the brother's friends, when they dropped him into Jesus, they dropped him, they tore down the roof and threw him in there on his mat. It was their faith that got him there. And God honored that. Sometimes you might be that mat mover to pull your buddy along till they get to the point where they have their own faith. Just remember, there are no impossibilities for me. You need to say that every day. There are no impossibilities with me because with God, all things are possible. Impossibility is a lie. It's not of the kingdom realm. It's not our God. The fifth thing I want you to do and just take a moment and I'm almost done. The word says no good thing will he withhold from the righteous. So I want you to visualize as we've talked about repented and and talked about ways to build your faith. I want you to visualize your mountain being thrown into the sea. Whatever that looks like to you. Because that's your realm of faith, your eyes, your seer gates were created for Christ, not just for TV, not just for, you know, reading books, but to see your situation changing is faith. Matthew 17, 20 through 21, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. And there's testings. There's seasons of testings where God will test your faith. And what is he producing in that? Endurance, long-suffering. Does that mean you quit? Does that mean you back down? Or does that mean you're going to pass the test? You're going to move that mountain. You're not going to stand and tolerate something that's not the word of God in your life. And how many know that moves you, you pass that test, that moves you into the realm of dominion. You're no longer fighting and fighting and fighting. You've, you've stepped into your identity in Christ and its fullness. And you have dominion over every area of your life. It bows to the word of God. So that test is worth passing. It's worth the fight. So the Lord said, you got two areas, two choices. Will you have faith or will you worry? Will you try to figure out how this mountain's going to move or are you just going to have faith at the end of the day? Nothing is impossible when you have God on your side, no matter what it is. How many know we can rejoice in that? We can trust in that? We can have hope in that? How many know... You may have moved a mountain, but how many know God may want you to move six more? He needs the giant slayers in this time, in this age. How many know David, heart of God, he moved the mountains. That's the faith that God imparts to us as we, we spend time with him and we're undefeated. If we could just get that in this realm... None of it matters. We are undefeated because of who we know, that he is our God. I don't know about you, but that gives me great courage for every battle. Because no matter how many nicks you got or how many kicks you got, you keep going. Because of that, we know the restorer. He restores all things. So, Lord, I just ask today, God, that you give an extra measure of faith, God, to the people Under the sound of my voice that you increase the gift of faith inside their heart. I just release faith into their hearts right now, into the atmosphere. And I thank you, God. I declare and decree that their mountains right now in the name of Jesus will be thrown into the sea. That God, you will move the obstacles that they didn't ever think was moved. Like Richard was saying earlier with exclamation points and exclamation points and exclamation points. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So I charge you to come out and fight the good fight of faith because it's worth fighting. And I thank you, God, that I get to run with each person here as a brother and sister in Christ. We get to run together and encourage each other's faith. 
and hold up each other's hands in the hard times, Father. I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I've got a few words of knowledge, um, and then I'll let Frankie play. I'm going to call them out, but just to honor the time and everything, we'll just pray for them in the back. But I, before I got here, the Lord told me these were the things he wanted to heal tonight. Carpal tunnel, I seen a left ankle, diverticulitis, acid reflux, and you may be, uh, these may be online as well. If they, if they are, just receive your healing as I call them out. Palpitations, lung restrictions, somebody fell and hurt their back. Toe malformation, it's messing up your walk. Hearing loss in the left ear and a tailbone that needs to be healed and an iron deficiency. So if any of those are you, as uh, they play and worship, I'm just going to ask you to come to the back. Me and Richard will pray for you. And God wants to heal you. So thank you so much. <laughs>